The second day of our LV game of the week in Taunton was one dominated by Somerset from the first ball to the last. It began with them on 349 for five and with James Hildreth on 133. He didn't take long to get to his 150, which was made off 205 balls with 23 fours included. On passing 147, it also became the first man in first division cricket this summer to score 1,000 runs. With a big total already on the board at the start of play, Hildreth had the ideal man at the other end in the form of Peter Trigo, who was soon hitting boundaries for fun in what was to become an explosive knock. The first of his three sixes took him quickly into the 30s, but this was just the start of a partnership which was to bat Worcestershire well and truly out of a game they really need to win to keep them clear of the bottom two places in the top tier. Somerset began this match themselves far too close to the relegation places for comfort, but with Trigo playing as he was in an improving team, they will be hopeful of moving well away from trouble before too long. That maximum was followed up by this single two balls later, which had Trigo at his half century of only 60 deliveries, from which the all-rounder had struck six fours and those two sixes. His side had easily earned maximum batting bonus points while reducing Worcestershire to only one with the ball and that's something the visitors are not used to. Hildreth cleared the rope in the same Brett D'Olivera over as it became clear that Somerset were going to kick on to make life very difficult for their opponents. Before they really made hay, these two batted right through the morning session. A session in which 138 runs were scored in 31 overs. It was wonderful to watch, unless you happen to be associated with Worcestershire, who were having one of their worst days of the Championship summer. They may have started this match just outside the bottom two, but hitherto have shown lots of fight and character, and have not often been blown away as they were being here. Hildreth headed to the break needing just 11 more for his double hundred, while Trigo was on 83, having smashed 79 runs all by himself in the first two hours of the day. The race after the break was to see which batsman would get to his landmark moment first and the talk also became about when Marcus Toscothic had seen his side dish out enough punishment. There was no sign of that ending yet as the 500 was posted with the partnership between these two aggressive players now past 150. Trigo had moved on to 99 when Hildreth struck this boundary off Ross Whiteley to get to his 200. A fabulous innings from the 30-year-old who still has so much to offer the county game. He had by now faced 287 balls in an innings which had been going for nearly six and a half hours. He'd hit 27 fours and one six in a knot which had taken his side out of sight. Trigo was raising his bat in the same over after getting to three figures off 131 balls with 12 fours and two maximums included. This was the 12th time the all-rounder had got this far in his long career, one which has seen him play for Middlesex and Kent and a host of other teams across the world. On his day, there aren't many better sights than Trigo in full flow. And full flow is what we now got from both batsmen. With landmarks reached and a declaration not too far away, it was now time for this pair to have some fun at Worcestershire's expense. Trigo took 18 runs off one Whiteley over as he began to find a boundary more often than not. The partnership between him and Hildreth was to go on to add 221 runs for the sixth wicket in only 44 overs. The declaration finally coming in the first hour of the afternoon with Somerset making 565 for five. Hildreth ending unbeaten on 220 and Trigo 130 which had occupied only 143 deliveries. Scoreboard pressure immediately had an effect on Worcestershire. Makeshift opener D'Olivera edging the first ball he faced from Craig Overton to Toscothic in the slips. Lewis Gregory delivered an excellent opening spell and in his fifth over he had Tom Fell also nicking to the slip cordon where this time Jim Allenby held on. The batsman on his way for 11 at 15 for 2. Alex Gidman lasted only three balls, comprehensively bowled in the same Gregory over for a duck. Three men had already failed, whereas in the Somerset innings, everyone, save Johan Myberg and night watchman Jack Leach, made at least a 50. Everything was going Somerset's way, and when Truscothic gave the ball to Leach, he had Daryl Mitchell taken behind with his very first delivery. 
Mitchell was on his way for 13, with his side on 33 for 4, and in a massive hole. The celebration seemed to suggest that even the bowler was surprised by the turn he got first thing. Thankfully, as far as the visitors were concerned, some rain arrived after bad light after tea, and there was no more play. In truth, Worcestershire would now like the heavens to open for the next couple of days too. They'll resume on the third morning on 44 for four, a massive 521 runs behind.